Alright, today I'm going to show you the differences between the flange welding technique and the butt welding technique. First, we'll start with the flange welding and show you the different tips, tricks, and pros and cons of it. And then we'll get to the butt welding and the same thing with that. And we'll compare the two and see which one's better for you and for what project you're working on. Alright, let's get started. Alright, a couple tips when you're flanging a piece. Always flange the body, never flange the panel unless you really need to. Now because the reason for that is you get to flange on the outside so you're not working from the inside you know you got better control of where you're welding your movements and everything like that another thing is on these on the back side because there's so much movement that this doesn't always fit so you sometimes have to go through and make little patches and stuff and uh, I did that and I'll show you here in a little bit exactly what I did and how I went about that and another thing is like right up in here you can't use a flange tool because of the inside and so I'll talk about that in a little bit and tips and little things that you need to work around and what if you run into another thing is if you look right here you can see how it dips in now with flanging and butt welding you'll always have that but with flanging you're going to be putting about that much bondo just because of the way the shape is so this tries to come down and usually supposed to come down farther or this supposed to come up farther and that's just the way this is shaped so about from right here to here you're gonna try to make the shape with bondo it's not don't get too afraid it's not like it's that thick of bondo you're using about that much so don't get too afraid of that now that's just one of the little pros and cons between the flange and butt welding techniques so all right let's get to showing more and different things about uh, real estate and your heat and welds and all that good stuff all right Here's the inner piece and what I did instead of actually flanging the rest of the body, so this part, I went ahead and flanged the new piece that's going on because it gives it a better look on the inner quarter panel and because of the weakness and years of abuse that this took that I would have had a major blow through if I tried to butt weld it up. And why I said that I did it on the piece itself because what I prefer is always flange the body. Now, some people may disagree, some people agree, but the reason why I do it that way is because you get way more control if you flange the body. So you get a lot more clean cleanliness, you get uh, a better look, a better weld, and just overall it makes it a lot easier and less time consuming if you do it this way. Okay, so the side that I flange was the lower quarter panel of the passenger side. So I'll show you how it shapes in. Now if you look closely, right down the line, I don't know if I can get it just right, but it's kind of got like a half moon shape right in here. I'll tell you a little bit of a reason why that's not the best thing to have, but it's pretty much required for every flange. And for the back end piece right here, I didn't flange it, I butt welded it instead because you don't see this ever and the way these are moved on and shaped that there's you always end up with gaps back here so instead of filling the gaps with weld I'll show you in a little bit what I did to fix that and get rid of that problem now one thing about flange welding that you'll come into is the heat and where you want to weld and how you want to do it so the best way to start is get your corners right get your corner here get your corners here 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 up on the inside and the same thing with the back too now the way I do it and go through is I'll put about one two three tacks with about an inch and a half then I'll skip about six inches do one two three do the same thing over and over again okay now one thing you gotta do is you gotta keep your heat down because when you look at this, this there's a lot of real estate here that you gotta keep cool and if you go over too much, get too hot, you'll start to warp this. And then you got a lot more problems that you didn't want to deal with. Okay, so one problem you might come into while flange welding is on spaces like right here. Because the inner fender well, it stops you from being able to use your flange tool. Don't get too afraid. You'll figure it out. Just butt weld it. And a couple other little things are when you're flanging compared to butt welding, you've got more... Of leniency of where you want to put your panel you can go up you can go down because you got about a quarter inch of seam that you get to lay on 
Alright, here's the bottom of the lower quarter panel piece. Now you see how everything's just tack welded on there. Tacked on, tack, tack, tack. You don't want to weld it like this all the way across. All you want to do is tack this on. It's not as critical as your body line. So what you'll do is you'll just come back through when you're done and then you'll seam seal it. Now if you see here, this piece I added on from the back side because it was so rotted out that I needed, you know, a, a something good to weld on. Now I made it long enough so I know that I have enough clearance and everything and what I'll do is I'll just come back when I'm in a little bit and cut this all out all the way down so it makes it all nice and flush and pretty much factory again. Alright so there's the bottom. Alright so here's the inner side of the lower quarter panel that I flanged on. Now remember I said the back I had to weld gap pieces on now, just two this one piece and then I got a second one down here and all I did was throw about a tack or two on and then beat it in place with body hammers got it all looking nice same thing with this side and then what I'll do when I'm uh, I'll bring come back with a hole saw because the thing about a hole saw is it's a saw that goes down instead of one that goes across so it's easier to get to this so I'll just come through and I'll slowly shave off when I need to and only leave behind what I'm covering of what I have welded on. Same thing with down there. And then after all that's done, I'll come back and I'll sandblast the rest of this and then put seam sealer in it so I don't ever have any rust come back through or have a chance for rust come back through. So here I want to show you you want to keep it clean when you're welding this so you get nice good welds on there. Now I did one spot where I didn't just so I can show you what it looks like. So while you're welding, and if you don't get this clean, this will come back through and try to ruin your welds on the other side. Now, there's a couple of tricks you can get past this on the other side, and I did that just so I know I'd have good weld all the way through, but this will drip down inside and then start smoking, and you'll crackling your welds, and it just, just doesn't come out right. But So that's just a point to show you that. <clears throat> all right, and then... Pretty much that's it for the inner side, nothing special, anything like that. Alright, now for the basic pros and cons of flange fitting. So basically there's only a couple of cons for flange fitting. You got more bondo, so you're just adding more weight to the car and shit like that. Not a big deal. For most most people who are restoring classic cars aren't trying to get that extra, you know, ten second quarter time. So if you don't mind having a little bit of body filler, then great. Um, the other thing is it's not as clean as a finish as a butt weld. Now, kind of obvious. Um, but mainly for the pros, it's, it takes a lot less time the butt welding, the prep work, everything like that. Just the, the leniency it gives you just makes it, the whole prep and uh, full process a lot easier for people to get it done. And <clears throat> It's a lot better for like thinned out metal, so weathered, rusted, old metal, it's a lot better because you you got two pieces of metal that you're laying over on top of each other, so you've got twice the thickness pretty much and a better heat displacement. So if you working on a car like this, this you know, 1967 Mustang, it usually sometimes, most of the time it would be better to do a flange fit. Um, and then compared to butt welding, you got a lot less blow through, a lot less chance for blow through, and the fitment is you endless almost. I mean, you with a pretty much quarter inch of up and down where you can go and sit and say you're welding across, right? And, or not welding, but grinding across, trying to get it all nice and level and stuff like that. And then say you just decided you like. That you didn't, I mean, you didn't mean to, but you know, you took a good gouge out. Now, when you take a good gouge out, usually you're screwed, especially when you're butt welding. Like, if you go down too far, you can't really make that up. But with flange welding, you can make that up. You know, you've got so much that quarter inch, you can go down up wherever you want. You don't have to move the panel around and shift it and bring everything up just because you screwed up one little part. So, that's another great thing about uh, flange welding compared to butt welding. And like I said earlier, flange to the body, that um, I can only stress that enough. 
for my experience and things that I've seen come back. Um, so pretty much I think that's it for flange. Um, we'll get the, I'll show you the butt technique next. <laughs> and that sounds sexy. Anyways, um, yeah, so there's flange. Uh, any questions, let me know. And then now we'll get the butting. <clears throat> Alright, so now we're on to the butt welding side. And I'm going to show you all the different little tricks and stuff that you're going to want to do and things you might run into, things you, if, if you do run into it, your options of what you can do and what you can't do. And then uh, the cleaning process, welding process, everything, your gaps, uh, just everything you need to do to get your side butt welded on. <clears throat> Alright, let's get started. Alright, so here is the driver's side lower quarter panel piece that I'm going to be welding on. Uh, here, this is everything that I cut out all the way up here. I got my piece right here. I'm just gonna throw it up there real quick for you to see. Quick fit. So here is a quick fit of what it's gonna be. Now, <clears throat> now I'm gonna show you. So you might run into little problems like uh, this right here, see how your curve isn't all the way in. I'm going to show you how to deal with that. Uh, if your gap's too big, I'm going to show you how to deal with that. And if you look right here, how the body folds in, I'm going to show you how to deal with that. Now you can see that I cut the panel quite a bit. Um, this top black line is the actual, where the original panel sat. So I've cut quite a bit off. All right, now I'm going to show you what it looks like all um, put up there clamped up and kind of pretty much tight Alrighty, hold on all right here it is for the most part just thrown together with a couple clamps not too much just want to show you what it's pretty much going to be before i weld it up and you see it's just going to be nice and tight and two pieces right up next to each other you're going to want a little bit of a gap about about forty thousandths is what i prefer now i have little clamps that or that have little shims that do this all perfect but not a lot of people do so I'm gonna do it without them so it gives you a better idea of what chances you have to get her done with alright now one problem is you'll see how the this body panel kinda goes in now what happens is you cut so much away you lost it lost a lot of its strength so it kinda just wants to sit where she wants and because it's curved in for so many years it's just gonna keep going in Another thing is, is it might have been punched before, you know, any kind of dent or stretch metal will do the same thing. So I'm going to show you little tricks that you can get rid of that. Now this is my very high tech trick. Now I got a very, very high tech flat blade screwdriver, some specialized tape. And then all I do is just grab the screwdriver. Put it in, set it, set it to where she's going to be pretty much close at now. That's pretty nice and straight. And all you do is taper back to the wheel. Pretty damn high tech. Alright, now I'm going to make another problem and show you how to deal with that too. Now another problem you will run into or might run into is I have a little dent right here. I got a lot of it out, but... I didn't want to get too much out so I can show you what you can do. So, see how it comes out. What is that? A good eighth of inch. And one thing you got to make sure you got to do with when you have something like this, you've got to start with this. You can't go down. You know, do your tack welds. You have to start with this because what will happen is you need to get this pushed in and get it to exactly where you need to be. Get your lines up right. Because if you try down here, and you got this bow right there, you're never going to be able to get that to this in a good flowing manner. Because it's like when you tape two corners of a piece of paper together, and then you tape the other ones, and all of a sudden it's rippled all inside. It's pretty much the same thing you're doing. You're putting two different points when you got so much leeway in the middle. So start up here, work your way down, keep her flat, and you've got to go in a straight line. <clears throat> so that's if you run into that problem that's what you've got to do to get that fixed so here's the back side now I'll show you I got a gap right here 
gap right there. You better probably take this light and put it on the inside. So you see those where the light's coming through? That's where I'm going to end up having to put a piece of metal to get it all nice and patched up. Now, it's not too tight back here. I don't have it clamped. And I got a couple screw holes to make it sucked up tighter. But just want to show you that's where little things like that you're going to have to put in, uh, you know, little patch panel pieces, get it fit right. Now, a one problem you might run into that I decided to cut away is you might have too much of a gap. Now, when butt welding, that happens. I mean, there's sometimes there's no way around it. Sometimes there is. But if you if it's one of your first times doing it, you're going to end up having too much of a gap, at least at one part of it. So I'm going to show you how to fix that and what to get rid of it. It's not too hard, but just try not to do it too much. All right. Now, next, I'm going to take it back down. I'm going to show you the cleaning part of it. So today I'm going to show you different chemicals, tips, tricks, and tools you're going to need to use to cleaning your welding areas. So for chemicals, I use acrylic clean or a wax and grease remover because it evaporates quick and the residue leaves behind is slim to none. A lot of people like to use a WD-40. I don't because of the residue leaves behind that you can't see. It's not 100% all the time it's going to screw your well, but there's always a chance with WD-40. So that's why I suggest not to use it. But if this is all you have, that's all you have. Uh, one tip you're going to need then if this is all you got is wait. You're going to want to wait about an hour or two or you could heat up the metal I suggest not doing that but it's whatever you like to do now for the process of this on these old cars they tarred all the inside of the quarter panels now what they did on top of that was some paint acrylic clean doesn't like to get paint off very well so just come in with a nice strong scraper knock the paint off as best as you can and then go over it with a rag and acrylic clean now when you think it looks pretty wet and damp in there just come through with this and it should come off like butter now you'll like repeat this process two or three different times and it will look great. When you think you're done, just go over one more time with this and then go over it with your scotch bright and everything. Now, if you don't have a pneumatic disc one, just regular block scotch bright works great. Now, after you think you've knocked all the tar and everything off, one last time with the rag, wipe it down, and then you're good to go. Now, for the area that you're going to want to do is about two to three inches. Now the reason for that is because if that tar gets in your weld, you're screwed. So you want a good area and a good distance for the heat from when you're welding, you don't have a chance. It's just really good assurance they won't screw it up. So that's why I always suggest two to three inches because if you have an inch and it gets in your weld, it may be a month, it may be a year, but at some point it's going to come back and you don't want to deal with that again. Alright, so this is it, what you need to know and what you need to use for your cleaning area. Remember, always use your PPE, keep your gloves on, keep the chemicals off you. Alright, so let's get started. So now on an inner fender well, you'll have a bunch of sealer that you're going to really need to take off because what ends up happening is if you get this too hot and this runs on your weld, you won't have a good weld. So what that ends up happening is you don't have a weld that's going to hold up for a very long time so it might come through or come off or break off. There's all sorts of things that can happen. So the biggest thing is get this clean, very clean. Anywhere you're about the weld, get it clean. And for little areas that you can't get to, my suggestion is sandblast and uh, it's got to be clean. So this little area up here I couldn't get to so what I'm going to do instead is uh, just sandblast it. Get all ready as you can tell I kind of got Look carried away around everything else. So yeah, just get it all up in there and I'm going to show you the stuff that you should use and what you shouldn't use. Now I got a 187 Hobart 7 function. So I got a lot of play that I can use different types of metals. Now when you open it up on the inside, every welder, most welders, not all, but mostly all have a chart on the inside. So we're running a 2575 or, yeah, so and a uh, 30,000 wire, and because it doesn't show a 19 gauge, you want to kind of do in the middle. So what you find here at 30 is a 140 and 250. Well, I've never ran one. I don't know anybody that does run one. So 250 is pretty good. It's a good place to start. Now, one thing about wellers is just because. The chart says it's good, doesn't mean it's always good. So what you're going to want to do, and what a lot of people will tell you to do, is to go by sound. And I'll show you that in a second. 
So right now we're going to listen for the weld. You want it to sound like sizzling bacon. Uh, you don't really want too much popping and stuff. Then I'll show you how to make a cold and hot weld. Alright, let's get started. Alright, not much popping. It was nice and sizzling pretty good. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, I went at it sideways like this and across. So, the more angle you have, the colder the weld, the more straight on you have, the hotter the weld. And for a thin sheet metal like this, you want it as cold as you can get it. And Because um, if you go too hot, you'll burn right through. But if you go too far sideways, your line's going to smack on it and then you're just going to get a bigger hole. So, you want it, a it's a good, perfect angle. You'll find where it sounds the best and works the best. You don't always want to lay this on top of the part. Sometimes I'll throw off, throw off the art. You just want just a, just a hair off the metal itself and then just go for it. All right, so this is a hot weld when you go straight on with it. Now as you can see, I pretty much went through towards the end. That's because it got so hot at the beginning, it won't blow through. But if you keep pushing your tacks, you'll end up getting it so hot that you'll end up blowing through. Now this is an angle weld. And it just usually comes out a lot nicer. It's a colder weld. It works better for thin sheet metal. Now it got nice and hot, but it didn't blow through because I had it at a colder angle. Now another thing you're going to want to watch out is if you're too far away. If you're too far away, it makes a real smacking sound and you really don't get any penetration. So this is what it sounds like too far away. Pretty much if you weld like shit, you're going to get a shit weld. Now that's what it looks like too far away. See how there's a line coming out and everything like that. and it's pieces are too far up, just didn't lay down nice. Now that one right there was a cold weld, and that right there is an angle cold weld. So pretty much try to get an angle, don't go too far up, don't go too far sideways, and stay off the part a little bit. And keep close enough to where you don't get any slag. Alrighty, now that you're ready for welding, let's get to it. Now pretty much she's on there for the last time. I don't think I'll be taking her off. I've took her off so far about three or four different times. I had to grind it down because what happened is when I messed with back here and all this, what it did is it brought it up. Especially when I pinched that in, get it closer, it brought it up more. So I had to take it off and grind it. And the more times you check, the more times you're going to get it right. So that's why I did it so many different times. Now one trick I'm going to show you is if you see right here, this kind of sticks out and you want to get as flush as you can when it comes to butt, butt welding well there's too much real estate here for a clamp to come over can't get a clamp to go from the inside that's where usually my little shim clamps would be perfect for this because it sucks it all up and nice but not everybody has those and they're cheap um, I don't suggest anything Harbor Freight but you can't go wrong with those it's, <laughs> they're so basic but you can get like eight of them for 15 bucks or four of them for 10 or something like that but um, just a really good investment to have uh, and I'll show you I can't find one right now um, to visit, but I'll throw a picture up in the corner to show you guys what they are but um, right here instead what you can do is just take the butt end of a hammer and push it in and see what you've done is you've got it nice and flush on it up and tight what we'll do is we'll see if I can hold this and do this at the same time the right way Measure twice, cut once. All right, so I pushed it in, all nice and flush right there. Cause you can't really tell too much, but uh, so yeah, it's in there. It's nice. It's not too far behind. It's not too far forward. Um, the one thing that's really going to get me is I got a little dent right here from before that's going to get bonded. So it looks like it's kind of fell behind, but it's actually pretty straight. And then. So when it comes to this right here, you're going to want to get that dent, so not exactly 
pound pounded out. I tried pounding most of it out. It was a lot worse. But what you'll do is you kind of push from the inside when you wall this, and then just push back and forth all the way down. So remember, you gotta do this side first <clears throat> because of the way it dips in right here. So you get this all the way down because you can't go here and just hope you get it throughout because now then you're just it's like pushing a piece of paper together. It's just gonna go just bunch up in the middle. So you want to follow a line down this. And don't, you know, and if you gotta wait, you gotta wait. It gets too hot. And you do a palm test. You know, it's nice and cold, so. Alright, so I'm gonna get to getting this down. I'll show you about halfway through where I'm at. Alrighty. Now I wanna show you something. Uh, earlier in this video, I showed you these two lines that I had, and they were perpendicular with each other. Well, if you look, that's how much farther it's moved just since I barely worked on it back here and got everything tightened up. That's the just little things that you do can move metal around. So don't always think that you're done and ready to go because you never are. Now I want to show you one thing that I always do when I'm welding a crucial body panel like this. Not a lot of people do this, but if you look, you see how you've always got a burn tip at the end of your weld. Oh, I'm shaking. What I do is every single time I go to go tack, new piece on. So what it does, it just, you're just getting more and more clean weld. And the cleaner the weld, the easier your cleanup's going to be when you go knock this all down. And the longer it's really going to last. And I'll just show you that. It just sounds better too. It's one good pop and then it goes. Look at that. Beautiful. Alright, she is all tacked on there, ready to go. All the way across. And I haven't done the back yet because I still have a lot to do back there after this is all welded on. Because after the weld, so much heat's going to push the metal. And I've already pushed the metal more this way because of welding that way. Alright, so next what we're going to do is just go through and make sure every single thing is right. And I can feel a couple back and forth that some's too far, some too far is over. So what you'll do is you'll go through and kind of knock it with a hammer a little bit on both sides. Not too much, just very lightly. Alright, so I'm going to go through, show you how I tack this all up, what way I move, what way I don't. And, uh, you yeah, know, let's get started. Coffee first. Alright, make sure you got a clean tip. Alright, so now after you get everything tacked on there, what you do is while you're welding this away, what ends up happening is you keep the heat moving. So when you get done with down here, you come back up here, start all over again, keep going. After a couple more couple times, you'll end up feeling that this real estate will start getting hot. Same thing with down here. So that's when you're gonna want to take a good two, three minute break. And then another thing is you might every now and then have a little bit of blowout. It's really common with these. Uh, butt welding, but you can't really get past it. So what you do is you'll just fill it and uh, if as long as you don't make a huge hole Then don't worry about it. You'll be able to fill it. No problem with a little bit more weld Now when you start getting them closer together like how these are I'll kind of show you How these are getting all nice and close together. So what you're gonna want to do is weld off attack So what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna go tack well, you know, you're just going to keep following it all the way down instead of hitting it in the middle where you can get it. So now, yeah, just start following out the back of your wells and then we'll, I'll get this all 
tacked up and show you what she looks like just before I start grinding her all down. Here's a quick little trick I want to show you if you want to know where exactly to weld. Just take a good marker, just mark you know, a good two inch areas, every two inches. Alright, so what you're doing is now these are more of like your jump areas. So you do one and then skip one, go to the next, skip one, go to the next, skip one, go to the next. And then when you come back through, you hit the areas that you didn't weld. So you skip past this one, so now you weld this one, you weld that one before, that means you skip that one, weld this one, vice versa, you know, all the way through. And that will give you a good idea of where you started and stopped. <clears throat> so, you know, you'll do one, two, three, four. So what you do is just do all your odds first, so on and so through, come back, do all your evens and just keep doing the same thing back and forth, back and forth. And that will give you a lot of good heat uh, where you want it to go and it will help show you where, you know, where your welds are. Another thing is you're going to want to keep your welds clean for the most part because you keep these all dirty, you don't know where the weld is. So sometimes you'll actually leave a little bit of a pinhole and that little pinhole can come back and bite you in the ass after you get, you know, all your Bondo and paint on. So you want to make sure everything is nice and sealed up. Go over it a few times, you'll find the little spots like there's the itty bitty one right there you never would have been able to see before because it was too dirty from the uh, flash of the weld. So yeah, just come back through just a little bit of some tips. Alright? Alright, it's Blair Witch time. Time to check if there's any holes in our wells. <laughs> you do is you turn off all the lights, get a trusty little light. You'll want to put it down in the back, just like so. And if we see anything on the other side, well, no, there's a hole in any of our welds. So, mm, not oh, oh, got one right there. Look at that. Oh, no. Nothing else, just that one. So now all of our spot welds are done, cleaned up, ready to go, made sure there's no holes, nothing like that. Now it's time to go through and weld in our spot welds. Now we got the underneath, we got the side like I just showed. So we're gonna go through, make sure everything's clamped up nice and tight. You see I got a shit ton of clamps going on over here, so everything's tight, close together. I'm gonna weld them up and we're gonna get back to it. Alrighty, well. We are all done with our spot welds, getting them in there. They're all nice and tight and welded on there. And good to go. Nothing left to do for the spot welding and all underneath here, we're all good. Now, just this beautiful backside I need to finish up. Got our piece all cut up, ready to go. It's just gonna sit in just like that. And it's gonna sit on this side, kind of butt up against it, and then overlay on this. So what I went and did is I kind of beat this in a little bit with the hammer, just so it would get a good overlay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the bottom, so down here, and then work our way up this edge, so that way I can get a better uh, my hand or get better formation in, because I'm still gonna come back and kind of beat it in a little bit, and then we just weld it all up. It's gonna end up taking bondo and shit like that, so uh, don't be too worried on denting it and it being 100%. Alright, so I'm going to get this welded in, tacked up, ready to go, and I'll show you what else I did. Alright, so I'm going to show you how to lightly tap it on there. Now there's a million different kinds of hammers you can use. There's all different kinds. So just pick which one you think would be able to get you the best in there. Now everybody's hammer is a little bit different than others. So what I would like to do is either use one or two of these hammers. This one's got a nice flat edge. It's got a nice rounded front. It's not too sharp. Like this one, because this one would just make good dents. I'm going to start with this one, kind of round it around, and then uh, see if that other one works. If not, I'll just use the back end. So. Now, if it's not doing too much good for you right there, one thing to do is put a dolly behind it. So you know, there's all different kinds. You got spoons. Yeah, half of them actually. That's a spoon, a spoon. 
happen, but one that would work the best with this because you need reach, this baby. So we'll see if we can put this one there. This, I'm going to use this That's pretty much as tight as she's going to get right there. So, now what we'll do is I'll come back while they're all up and then we'll be done with that. Alright, here's the final product. Got the piece all welded in. Remember, start from the bottom, work my way up. Got the back all tight. Manipulated the front down, the butt on along with the side of the body. While they're all up, she's sealed all up nice. Now, this is what she looks like all done. Got the top, back, front of the, and everything good to go. All right, now this is what happens when you're doing butt welding. Sometimes you come into too big of a gap and this is how you do it. All right, now let's see what else we can work on. One thing you're gonna go into is you'll have a little bit of a ditch. Now remember, you're just gonna have to fill that with full of Bondo. What happened to this, it's been hit from stretch, so I got more of a V. Now, not a big deal, just fill it full of Bondo. Now the panels with the less dents and less crap wrong with them you'll have more flatness just means less bondo so now just go get all your welds grinded up get your bondo done make sure everything's clean no rust no crap and i hope i helped you out hope you learned something uh, if you got any questions let me know Alrighty, now get off your ass and get this done